I'm Derek Bowman. Joining me is head football coach Norm Ash. And uh, Coach Ash, first of all, thanks for being on with us. Well, it's great to be here, and I'm excited to talk about Titan football. Well, Titan football, four and two on the season. Uh, some some good wins, a, a couple of tough losses. Let's start with um, the this last game against North Park. Down early, uh, down a good amount, and uh, that you guys bounced back and fought back in the second half. Tell me a little bit about your perspective of the game. Well, if you look at all our conference wins, they've all been uh, come from behind wins, and I, I don't know. I, I think I have a, a group of kids that just like to uh, come from behind. I don't know. It's not uh, what the coaches want by uh, by any means, but uh, it shows a lot of character of our team. You know, I don't think any team wants to get down right away, and it seems like we do – we make some mistakes to allow the other team some opportunities to put the ball in the end zone, and then all of a sudden our kids start playing. But uh, we'd like to get off to a good start. I think we did against um, North Park. We took it down on a seven-play drive and scored, and and then we had a short field uh, on a because we had a, a missed kick on the kickoff, and then we had an unsportsmanlike, and all of a sudden we put our defense on the 41-yard line on a short field, and they scored to get some momentum. And then we turned the ball over on a short field, and again, you know, they scored on our defense. So we just got, you know, get better of, of taking care of the game. You know, I call it game management. And uh, don't give the other team opportunities. And we call that chari- charitable giving, and we got to quit doing that. Well, some of the things uh, to start with, usually we start with offense and we start with the quarterback and start things. You've had a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say issues there, but – Continuity has been a little tough because of injuries with Jay Lemonager and Ryan Sachs. Tell us a little bit about the two of them and how they've been able to work the game plan and help with those comebacks. Well, both of them are sophomores. Um, Ryan was here last year as a freshman. Um, he played JV for us and uh, uh, got bigger and stronger. And then in, in the offseason, uh, Jay Lemonager transferred from Mount Union um, College. And we did recruit him out of high school. He decided to go to Mount Union. We're glad that he came back. And so uh, starting this, the year, uh, we kind of had an open competition. And the other, the other person that was there was Sage Schindler. He was a returning quarterback, and we let everyone compete in the, in the preseason, and Jay won the job. And then in the first game, um, Jay hurt himself on the first series and went down with a knee injury. In the meantime, Sage Schindler, Schindler had left the team, uh, and so all of a sudden Ryan Sachs, our number three, was thrust in there, and he did a great job and led us to a victory. And so he was in there for a while, and um, Jay came back from the injury. Um, Ryan didn't do so well in a game, so we, right, we kind of um, pulled him and, and put Jay back in. So it's been back and forth a little bit. Um, uh, right now, Jay's our quarterback. You know, he's a great thrower, has a quick release and strong arm. So we're excited about that. And Ryan is coming back from an injury now, too. So we have two quarterbacks that have led us to victory. So that's a, that's a, that's a good thing to have. Well, and I know, I know Jay, actually, from high school. He went to Clifton about an hour east of here, slightly north. Uh, more of a pocket-type passer. Is, is Ryan also a pocket passer, or is he more mobile? Uh, Ryan is a, is a great athlete and is a great competitor. And um, what he did in high school was mostly run the football. And so he had to sharpen his passing skills once he got to college, and he's done a great job of – learning uh, to go through his reads and uh, co- uh, read uh, coverages. And so he's gotten better um, uh, than he was last year in that regards. Uh, he's really improved this year, I mean, since he's been on the field. I mean, I just see a, a big in- increase um, in his awareness of where coverages are at and things like that. But, uh, yeah, Ryan's going to extend plays. I mean, he, he'll use his, his, his legs to, to make a play. Um, and Jay is a great thrower. I mean, he has a quick release, strong arm. But don't don't uh, count Jay out either. I mean, uh, Saturday he had 70 yards of rushing this past Saturday, and uh, he'll, he'll extend plays too. Just two different type of athletes. Jay's a little bit bigger. You know, uh, Ryan might be a little bit faster. So, Well, you've been, you've been blessed throughout the years that I've been here with uh, usually a pretty good quarterback, a, a, a number one that stands out above the others and – and that, and if there's been injuries, you've been able to have some backups come in and do some things. But now you've got two that showed that they can step up and do. Um, I've never seen you have that opportunity to have the choice of which quarterback is in, depending on what you want to do. Is there is there a possibility that as games goes on, you could be switching and, and using to, to 
take advantage of their strengths, or do you, do you prefer just to have that one and the other as the backup? No, I, I mean, I think that's a great point that you make. I, I, think we, I think we can make that switch anytime we want as far as we want to change the pace of the game. Uh, both have experience now, and our, teams re- our, our football team responds to them, and that's the other big thing is their leadership skills. I think our, our offensive team has confidence in both our quarterbacks. But when Jay's in there, we also use Ryan as a, a slot receiver. And so that's what, how we start out the year, actually, is to get him more involved and put him on the field with Jay. Now, that didn't work out because we had some injuries, but now we're going to get back to the point where they're both going to be healthy and we can get back to you know scheming um, that up a little bit. Well, let's get to the running game. Uh, obviously, the running game starts with the offensive line, and that. but you have Seth Albin running behind that line. He's gained 307 yards on the year. Uh, tell us a little bit about the offensive line and creating room for Seth to run. Yeah, last year we had five senior starters in the offensive line. Actually, we graduated six seniors, five were starters. And uh, so everyone is new in the offensive line this year. And uh, that was going to be our biggest question mark offensively. And so I put a lot of pressure on the offensive line coach to get the job done. That offensive line coach is me. Um, (laughs) So I had a good idea who would be stepping up to fill those roles, but I didn't know for sure until we got in preseason camp. And and how it uh, panned out is we we are starting a a freshman at left tackle, Alex Valdez. Uh, He's a a tremendous freshman for us. Uh, He's 6'4", about 330 but he's extremely quick for his size. And I felt like he was ready, and um, he's done a great job. I think he's learning. Um, every, every week we play, he's learning. He's, he's not 100%. He makes mistakes. But just to see how physical he is, you know, he can play at this level right away. Then our left guard is Dylan Myers. He was uh, probably our top freshman last year, and he got some playing time, but then got hurt in the end at, towards the end of the season. And he's done a great job. And then our center is uh, Connor Sweeney. He's a junior. And he was ready to step in to, to fill that role that Jake Bowie, a three-time all-conference, all-American center that we had, and he's, he's, um, uh, has done a, a remarkable job as, of making that transition. And then I'm playing at right guard, two seniors. Um, actually, I'm rotating them, and that's uh, Jackson Joyce and uh, Holden Smith. Uh, they're both, both very similar in their play. Uh, they have good size. They have good knowledge. They're very extremely smart. And then at right tackle is, is another sophomore, and that's Caleb Hines. And uh, I knew that last year he could possibly be that person to step in there. And Caleb, Caleb is extremely athletic, very smart. You know, again, all the, all the line I, I just mentioned, we need to get them bigger and stronger in the future. But think about it. We're starting um, one freshman, two sophomores, a junior, and, and then we're splitting time with the, uh, two seniors. So we're still relatively a relatively young offensive line, and – and through the course of the season so far, you know, we're four and two. Uh, I, I think they've done a great job. And so we're looking forward to having a lot of those guys back. So that's the offensive line. Now the running backs, uh, <laughs> Seth Albin, you know, actually the running backs were extremely deep too. Uh, Seth Albin uh, is the one that starts for us. But we have uh, uh, Bell Woodson comes in. He's a sophomore that is extremely talented. And Ian Kramer is a junior. Um, those are the three top three, and, and of course we lost, lost um, one of our captains in the first game, and that's Zach Bozart, and uh, he had just scored a touchdown right before the half and was celebrating and suffered a knee injury, which is very disappointing for him. But uh, we were extremely deep there, and then we have two uh, really talented freshmen uh, that we're really excited about, and that's Danny Kent and Jahari Scott, and both of those running backs are seeing time up on the varsity, so I just name you know we're five running backs, so we're extremely deep there, and, and we we feel confident with any of those running backs in there. Well, not to mention both your quarterbacks capable of running also. Yes, as they they're kind of up there in your stats, and then we get to the receivers. Your two top receivers are uh, Charlie Hamilton and Miles Key. Tell us a little bit about them and any of the others that are stepping up. Well, everyone knows about Charlie Hamilton. He had an extremely um, exciting year last year. He was all-conference. Um, he was elected captain, and he has been what we call a gamer this year. I mean, he's come up with some big catches. Um, last Saturday against North Park, we had a fourth and 
fourth and five down on the goal line that was extremely important, and, and we isolated Charlie, and he came up with a big catch to get the first down. But he's, he's long, you know, he runs well, runs great w- routes, he's extremely smart. So I think he's one of the top receivers in the conference, if not the top receiver, and a, a, a definitely an all-conference performer for us. And then Miles was a, a top freshman last year. You know, he showed some glimps, glimpses of greatness as a freshman, you know, JV-wise and so forth. And, and then he had a great spring last year. So he's a little bit different receiver. Where Charlie is on the line type of receiver, you know, long, tall. Where Miles is more of a, a slot receiver, put him in motion, move him around. And uh, he's extremely effective once he gets, you know, in the open field. And, and he becomes more of a running back than a receiver when he gets the ball. Well, and then uh, you talked about a receiver on the line, a big guy, a uh, slot receiver. Your tight end, Kevin Graham, he's got three touchdown catches also. Kevin's a hybrid. Um, actually, in high school, he was a quarterback and then uh, went to University of Illinois and transferred to Illinois Wesleyan. He was not playing at U of I, but he missed it and came here. And so we talked about what he should play. And I said, well, what about tight end? He says, well, I've never played tight end. I never blocked. I said, well, we can teach you how to block. Uh, but you're a good athlete, and so he's made that transition. It was slow going at first, learning the, the blocking part of it, uh, but he is what we call uh, our T, which is off the line of, of scrimmage, you know, more in the backfield, wings, we put him in slots, very athletic, can run really well, catches the ball extremely well. So he's a big, big uh, play type of re- receiver or tight end for us. Well, we, we talked a lot of offense. I know defense a lot of times is what wins championships and, and that. So let's go to the defensive side of the ball. Your leading tacklers are Joshua Klein and Anthony Wackel. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, those are your top two. Who as tackles, but sometimes it's the defensive line that allows them to make those tackles. So let's start with the defensive line. Well, last year we started a lot of young kids in the defensive line. I mean, we started two freshmen, uh, played two freshmen. One started uh, extre- uh, quite a bit last year. And so we're excited about having those kids back. But we are building our defensive line around Connor Murphy, who was an all-conference player as a junior. He's an interior player, could play outside, very athletic. I mean, Connor played at 6'3", 245 last year. He came into camp at 6'3", 270, and, and was having an extremely um, great year and got suffered a, a knee injury. And so he's out for the season, which is really disappointing. And it does, it does hurt our defense. I mean, we miss him in there because he was a force and people had to account for him. But the, the, the defensive line that we have are doing a great job. Um, of course, the, the young defensive line I'm talking about is, is Josh Lavachek, and he plays one end, and, and Zach McNe- McNeese plays the other end. Uh, both extremely quick, very athletic, um, can, can speed rush and get to the quarterback uh, very quickly. And then inside, we have... Um, Joel Bear and Nick Diener. And right now, because of Connor da- is down and, and injured, um, we have Owen Faby there. So um, Joel and, and Nick are more shorter, you know, wider type of defensive linemen, but they, they both can, can move extremely well for their size. And then Owen is more of a defensive end that we convert, converted to play inside, and, and he's very athletic. So... Um, I think teams have a hard time with speed and quickness in the defensive line, and so that's kind of our forte. Well, and as I was I was looking at this, I was talking with uh, Tyler, who does the video side of things, before you got in here for the interview. Uh, McNeese and Lavachek, the, the defensive ends, they have really uh, stepped things up. you got McNeese, who has 11 and a half tackles for loss, basically two a game. Uh, four of those are sacks. Lavachek, uh, seven and a half tackles for loss, a little more than one per game with three sacks. They're, they've been bringing around the ends. Yeah, uh, you got they're, they're, very, um, they're very shifty, I should say, you know, and coaching the offensive line, I'd rather go against a bigger, slower defensive lineman than a smaller, quicker one. And um, both, both Josh and Zach give our tackles um, – a lot of trouble in practice, which it's good for us to learn and, and good competition. But uh, that's, their, that's their main thing is they, they have great technique. They get off the ball, and they can, they can get to the quarterback really quick. Well, and then as the defensive line works, some of the jobs for them is to clear the road for the linebackers to get through. In other words, eat up the offensive line so the linebackers can get through there. Tell about the linebacking crew. 
Well, one is our captain, uh, Fernando Chavez, and uh, he plays our mic position, and then Josh Klein, a junior, plays our backer position. And um, both are, are very athletic. Um, you know, Fernando can get downhill just as well as Josh. Uh, we put them in situations that they're going to have to cover too, and, and so they're athletic enough to do that. But they're the ones that have to have great run fits, you know, um, depending on what our defensive line is doing. And um, I think Josh is probably leading us in tackles this year, so he's done a great job. Yeah, he has 50 tackles, eight for loss. Three of those are sacks. And then the secondary, you know, you face uh, college teams like to throw the ball. You secondary, you have three interceptions this year uh, defensively, but tell us about the secondary. Yeah, uh, offenses have changed, you know, evolved over these years, and everyone is, is throwing the ball much more and running RPOs and, and uh, those type of things. So uh, we have um, kind of a hybrid position. We have what we call a star that's a cross between a linebacker and a defensive back, and Frank Rohde is playing that. He started last year as a freshman, so we, we took some, uh, some lumps with him a little bit, you know, learning experience with Frank. Uh, but he's come back. He's come back this year. He's much stronger and bigger, and and has great great game sense. And he's the one that came up with the big interception against North Park, and returned it 70 yards for a touchdown. He got a pick six. So he's out there to the field side, and then to the to the boundary side. We have uh, Anthony Wackel. He's one of another captain for for us. Anthony um, was one of the top my one of my top recruits his freshman year coming in. Uh, had an injury coming in, played with it. Then his sophomore, junior year, he lost to injury because he had surgery, and it just didn't go well. So I'm really happy that he's been able to play this year, and, and he's a great leader for us. And so he kind of plays that rover position for us, which is you know kind of down in the box but also has coverage. And then uh, at free safety, we have Sha Sam Schott. He's a sophomore, and he started as a freshman. So, again, learned, uh, learned under fire last year. Very smart. He's like a quarterback there for us and uh, kind of gets everybody in the right position. And then our corners are, again, Artis Benjamin. Uh, he was a freshman last year. We started him, uh, learned under fire. But Artis is, has done a tremendous job this year. He's what we call our lockdown corner. Uh, we have put him on some very talented receivers in the Seaside W, and uh, Artis has come through time and time again. And I know that when we played Carroll, Carroll had – had a great receiver who was leading the conference, and uh, I think he shut him down to three catches and 18 targets and only had three catches. And so Artis is that guy that we'll put into the boundary and, and put on top receivers. And then the other corner is Jimmy Capecci, a sophomore. Did not start as a freshman, got to play a little bit as a freshman. But as you can see, as I mentioned, all these guys were relatively young back there. And um, that's good and bad. I mean, uh, uh, the good thing is they all – Learned under fire last year as freshmen, and they're better this year, but we got, you know, two more years with them. Well, and that, that's really the good news is they're, they're doing well now, and they're only going to get better for the next couple of years. Casual football fans sometimes forget about the third part of, of football. You get the offense, you get the defense, but special teams, they've come up big this year. I know first game of the season, a block punt, return for a touchdown. Uh, tell us about some of the special teams guys and, and the kickers also. Uh, yeah, I think most coaches will tell you that, that special teams are a big part of the game, and the most important play in football is the punt team, no doubt about it. And so um, we try to put defensive players on, on the punt team that can go down and tackle, and on the kickoff team, and then on the kickoff return team, we try to put some offensive players that like, like receivers that can block and so forth. But it comes down to our return uh, specialists and also our, our punter and our kicker and holder and so forth. So uh, we're very fortunate um, in regards to our, our kicking game to have two seniors um, doing our kicking and that's uh, and punting. And that's John Recuzio is our punter. He's a senior. And John had a great game last week. He got off a 64-yarder last week against North Park. And um, just you can tell he's experienced, you know, and he knows how to put the ball where we need to put it on a punt. And so uh, that's great to have him there. And then Andrew Stang is our kicker. And Andrew started as a freshman and been our kicker for the last, you know, four years. And uh, extremely strong leg. I mean, he has uh, many touchbacks on kickoff, which you like. And then he's been, um, uh, like, like the last three weeks, I think he's been 100% on PATs. Um, 
missed a 50 yarder against North Park. That's kind of long, but it was with the win, and we thought we'd give it a try. But it's good to have those two, um, you know, handling our kicking duties. And then um, our return guys, um, we're, we're, we're blessed. We have some really good returners. Uh, right now, on the kickoff, we've used Seth Albin, who's a running back, of course. And then uh, Mel um, Woodson, who's a running back. Miles Key. Um, we also have used Danny Kent, that freshman running back. He's done a good job. And then handling the punting duties, uh, we've had Charlie Hamilton back there. We've had Marky Matos back there, Miles Key back there. So, again, we, we have a lot of depth there that we can go to, and, and they're all capable of taking a ball all the way and making a big play. Well, coming up, you still have uh, about half the season to go. You have four more games, a little under half. Carthage coming to Bloomington, 1 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, tell us what uh, maybe, and I know you still got six days of game planning to go, but tell us what one or two uh, key things might be for that game. Well, defensively, they're, um, they're, kind of, they're kind of going through a transition year. I just came from uh, you know, working on the scout on them, and I think they have two seniors and two juniors uh, on defense, and the rest are sophomore freshmen. So fairly young defensive unit. Uh, they like to bring pressure you know, off the edge. They like to move the defensive line. So we're going to have to be aware of that and, and also take advantage of the coverages that, that, use, that they use. And everybody uses all, all the coverages. I mean, it's not just one. And so we have to get prepared for those things. Offensively, um, they've always been a kind of an inside, outside zone, power type of team. Uh, their quarterback, I think they've made some changes, so that's not um, uh, a position that, that, that's in stone. I mean, I don't know who we're going to get for sure. They made a coaching change last year, uh, last week, and so we'll wait and see who they're going to start. But we have to, and they always have a you know, big offensive lineman, they get off the ball. So, you know, defensively, we've got to correct the mistakes that we're making, you know, and not give up big plays and, and get ourselves off the field. And offensively, we've got to put the ball in the end zone. I'd like to remind everybody that game is at 1 o'clock on Saturday at Tucci Stadium. Uh, 12.30 pregame, Eric Stock and Joel Swanson will be on the call for that. And it'll also be on WESN 88.1. Again, 1 o'clock kickoff. So if you can't make it to Tucci, go to IWSports.com or WESN and watch or listen to the game there. Coach, thanks for coming in. Well, thanks. It's great to be here, and uh, I hope everybody comes out and see the Titans play on Saturday. That is Coach Norm Esch of the Titan football team. I'm Derek Bowman.